2020's biggest game looks breathtaking. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be telling you everything you need to know about Cyberpunk 2077. There are more people living below the poverty line than anywhere else. For this list, we're looking at the most important information about CD Projekt Red's upcoming RPG, Cyberpunk 2077. It's our choice if we want to finish her off or spare her. Your Cyberpunk, your rules. Number 10. It's not for kids. Just take the f***ing chip decks. It goes without saying, but Cyberpunk is far from family friendly. It's still too far from release to have been rated officially, but everything we've seen so far supports that the game will certainly have a mature rating. The 2018 E3 demo showed a completely naked man and woman in a bathtub, and sources say CD Projekt Red won't shy away from nudity at any point. On top of that, you can expect the standard video game violence and a whole lot of swearing, but there's also the potential for heavy drug use. The last part may cause problems for Australian players, as the Australian Classification Board has a history of refusing classification on games where using drugs improves player stats. Though CD Projekt Red are confident they can still get the game sold down under. It's a city of dreams, and I'm a big dreamer. Number 9. Selectable Backstory the character creation in Cyberpunk 2077 is the kind you'd expect from a full-fledged RPG. Cyberpunk is going the opposite way from what The Witcher games did with Geralt's set backstory, instead taking a page out of Mass Effect's book by allowing you to choose your own upbringing. You'll be able to pick one of three selectable life paths at the beginning, Corporate, Nomad, and Street Kid. Corporate, for example, gives you greater speech influence over characters in corporate positions, while Street Kid garners more respect from gang members. Nomad won't have any social influence, but does have a greater array of problem-solving abilities, though to what extent we don't know. Still, it would give us a reason to replay the game again and again. So for example, you might imagine that if you're a street kid, you will have an easier time talking to different gangs. Or if you're a corporate, you might have an advantage over people from the corporation since you know how they think and how they operate. Number 8. Factions Are you alone? I just want the money. You got the chip? All right, start her up, bug. Why don't you go to the bathroom, wash up, we gonna be with you in a minute. No RPG is complete without a set of warring factions, all of which have a unique aesthetic and pose a different challenge to the player. Factions we've seen in demos include Militech, who deal in high-grade weapons and intelligence, and Maelstrom, a criminal gang of drug pushers. We also saw the Trauma Team, who will come offering medical aid to anyone with enough money and foresight to take out an insurance policy. There are many more gangs and corporations making up the rich world of cyberpunk, and changing your allegiance is a great way to ensure replayability. This piece of shit, Anthony Gilchrist, did he or another asshole at Militech leak info to you or anyone else about a convoy? Number 7. It will have multiplayer after launch. One of the new weapon modules we now have installed is a ricochet targeting system connected to our eyes. This allows players to bounce bullets off walls and hit enemies hiding behind cover. At launch, the only thing Cyberpunk will have is its single-player campaign. Since this is the biggest draw and the reason most people want to play it, this certainly isn't an issue, but it's nice to know that further content awaits us down the line, in the form of a post-launch multiplayer. What this multiplayer will consist of isn't yet clear, but CD Projekt Red has said that their focus is the story, and the multiplayer won't be available until after all the planned story-based DLC releases. This could be as far off as 2022 though, so don't buy the game thinking it's going to have a complete multiplayer package right off the bat. Ours is a wolf. Number 6. No Morality System Okay, get to a clinic, now! Mr. Well's condition is critical. Go! Immediate medical help okay. is required. Just, just hold on. Just, hey, hey, just think about all the good shit we're gonna have, huh? CDPR is foregoing the typical good karma, bad karma morality system that other games enjoy in favor of a more nuanced reputation system. Rather than define actions as good, evil, or neutral and change the way people interact with you based on that, you'll have a different reputation with every group you encounter, called street cred in-game. This means that players will have to rely on their own sense of right and wrong to decide what the best course of action will be, but nothing to telegraph whether your decision was good or bad until you see the consequences. And even then, it still may be hard to know whether you made the right call. City's always got a promise for you. Might be a lie, 
an illusion. But it's there, just around the corner. Number five, gender options. You also fully customize your character using a deep customization system that spans not only your look and style, but also your abilities. While the first gameplay reveal originally showed binary gender options, CD Projekt Red has since shifted course. Now, Cyberpunk will instead choose between a masculine or feminine body type and a masculine or feminine voice. This has been done to be truer to the cyberpunk genre and the theme of bodily autonomy it purveys, as well as making the game more welcoming to players who don't fit into the traditional gender binary. It's some of the most liberating customization seen in a mainstream RPG, with V's appearance being entirely in the hands of the player. V themselves will almost always be referred to by their name rather than pronouns to create a gender-neutral protagonist anybody can project onto. Hey, so V, look, I need to talk to you. That news as big as my balls. And I got a hot date with my Ripper Doc. Number four, the setting. In 2077, they voted my city the worst place to live in America. Cyberpunk 2077 is set in Night City, a fictional metropolis in California sandwiched directly between Los Angeles and San Francisco. Dripping in neon signs and advertisements, the game takes place after the Fourth Corporate War, a result of the city being controlled by evil companies who care about their bottom line above all else. The sprawling city is made up of six distinct districts you can traverse by driving, and yes, it's true, there won't be any loading as you explore. Finally, the desert surrounding the city is also accessible, and there's even going to be some content hidden out there for those who brave the wastes. We have a city to burn. Number three, microtransactions are neither confirmed nor denied. How's it look to you? With the scanner, we can zoom in on things and take a closer look. Originally in October 2019, in an interview with GameSpot, CD Projekt Red's John Mamias seemed to shut down talks of microtransactions when he labeled them as, quote, a very bad idea. But then, a month later in an investor call, company president Adam Kaczynski contradicted Mamias by saying that Cyberpunk's multiplayer might have some form of monetization, but didn't give any specifics, claiming it was too early to say. CD Projekt Red has in the past criticized people for thinking an RPG like this might have microtransactions in it, so hopefully they stick to their guns and don't submit to the pressure of monetizing absolutely everything. If all goes well, the only in-game purchases we're prompted to make will be those for the story DLCs. See how this works now? Only the corp gets what it wants. Number 2. Stats Shields down. Let's finish him off. Cyberpunk will boast a more unique roster of stats than many other games, with lots of them lifted directly from the tabletop RPG. While you've got standard categories like strength and intelligence, the most interesting stat is easily the cool stat. No, this doesn't determine how awesome NPCs think your character is, sadly, but instead refers to how well you're able to keep your cool under pressure. If you've got a low cool level, you may find yourself unable to lie convincingly, potentially leading to hairy situations. However, other fan favorite stats from the tabletop games are strangely absent, most notably empathy, which determines how much cyberware you can install before you lose your mind. Okay, all clean. Now for the fun stuff. Lay that major league on yours right here. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, you can do a pacifist run. I'm sorry. It's long been a criticism of many RPGs that you can't play all the way through without accumulating a pretty unforgivable body count. No matter how many good deeds you try to do, many players still feel that violence shouldn't be your only option in an enemy encounter. Luckily, CD Projekt Red has come out and said that almost every weapon and ability in the game will have a non-lethal version, meaning you get all the fun of great gunplay without the narrative dissonance of being a saint while mowing down legions of generic folks. But of course, if you want to kill everyone you see, You've got that option as well. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. In the mood for more awesome gaming content? Be sure to check out this video here on Mojo Plays. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.